The Day Billy Fell Off the Cliff by Byron Broussard The Day Billy Fell Off the Cliff, Part 5 Accompanied with the slowly rising sight came the horrid sound Billy had been searching for. His eyes slowly opened to see the impossible. Everything was on fire. The fire blazed upon every inch of every surface in the small room Billy was centered in. Ah, Billy screamed inside his mind, for the only sound his ears heard sounded like being in the middle of a campfire. Billy shut his eyes, but could not unsee the scene he had witnessed. The bright light that seemed to come from every direction now had a sinister connotation. Attached. Billy's mind raced. I'm surrounded by fire. I hear with my eyes. He quickly opened his eyes to the sound and vision of the fire to look at his body. His entire body was alight. Shit. He closed his eyes to the noise and began to pat himself down, feeling the heat rise. Not cool. Billy was beginning to panic. He could feel smoke entering his lungs. He choked and coughed. His skin felt like it was burning through the fat and still burning down. He opened his eyes and heard the campfire and looked again at his body. The fire is still there! He closed his eyes, now upset. He could feel something happening with his throat and body, so he opened back his eyes. Billy's mouth was open and spewing out bursts of flames in the already lit room. His rage climaxed with his vision, and he could hear the roar escaping his throat. The fire that came from his mouth was like a thin layer of lava dripping down the wall. What am I? He spoke in his mind. Apparently, there's a fire inside of me and a fire outside. With this thought, the burning sensation began to wane. I think with my words. I speak with my emotions. I hear with my vision. I feel with my mind. Billy felt like a new being. He no longer asked why, but what next? If I think with my words and feel with my mind, I can talk my way through most of this realm. I should be able to comfortably open my eyes and contain my feelings about what I hear. As Billy thought through his his plan of action, His body sat down and crossed its legs. I tell myself to be calm, therefore make myself think calm, ending in a calm body. Billy held out hope that no new elements would be thrown into the mix while he was learning. He got up and closed the door of the room he was in. I don't even need my eyes to move around. Billy opened his eyes, heard the fire, then got up to open the door. The fire doesn't burn, show me the world. Billy thought this with no question of why. Billy's new body began to take steps towards the open door. The horizon was filled with red flames. The fire touched every surface of this world. There were cottages all made of straw that seemed to never turn to ash under the flames. In fact, Billy realized that nothing he could see was turning to ashes. The sound of the campfire went steady on. Billy found some sort of pattern in the space between cottages and walked on what seemed to be coal. What does the sky look like here? He turns towards the sky and... He turned towards the sky to see many dark clouds. There was red lightning that seemed to flash upwards towards space. Billy searched the space above his head and saw a bright yellow star in the middle of the heavens. The star was smaller than the sun that Billy was used to seeing, and the image of the star came with its own horrid noise. When the star was in Billy's view, he could hear a very loud and very lonely wind. Billy didn't like the sound of the lonely star wind, and his body responded by ducking into the nearest cottage. What the fuck was that noise? 
Billy shook his head. He started to step sideways and turn. He could see that some of the fire on the floor was moving in a pattern. The pattern made the noise of distant crying. There was a burning crying skeleton on the floor, clutching its knees with its bony fingers. God damn it, Billy cried in parts fear, but mostly out of anger. I did not ship one tear on my arrival here. This place doesn't even hurt if you don't let it hurt you. As his thoughts raced through his mind in a matter of seconds, his mouth opened very wide and out came lava and precision jet streams. The skeleton was promptly covered in projectile lava from Billy and doing the most disturbing dance that Billy had ever witnessed. The skeleton had stopped crying as soon as it felt the first spray of lava and began to scream. Its bony red fingers went up to its black flaming eye sockets and pulled down on them hard. Then its bony fingers would release its eyes, letting his head come all the way up and around till the skeleton was bending its whole spine backwards. The limbs of the skeleton were flailing in a weird pattern that seemed oddly ritualistic. Its legs moved in a running motion and its arms came raking up and down the bones of the spine. The lava turned the skeleton a deep black color, but the skeleton had dug a small indention in the floor so that the lava stayed in a pool under it. This can't be happening. Billy's body reached out and touched the skeleton and a flash of empathy went through the went through his body. Billy's body reached out and touched the skeleton and a flash of empathy went through his body. Billy felt the extent of pain the skeleton was Billy felt the extent of the pain this of the skeleton in an instant while it was hard to say. Billy felt the extent of the pain of this skeleton in an instant, and when Billy removed his hand, the feelings left. This is so happening, and we can share experiences through touch. The skeleton did not stop dancing in the pool of lava. The indention was beginning to look more like a hole. The skeleton was digging itself into a hole, with its ritualistic fire dance. Billy decided that he'd seen enough. The skeleton was again crying, holding its knees with bony fingers inside of a four-foot-deep hole it dug with its bare bones. I'm not alone here. Billy walked out of the skeleton's cottage. Billy walked out of the skeleton's cottage and back to the road between homes and the now-familiar sound of the campfire. I bet if I imagined the fire burning me for too long, I too would end up looking like that skeleton. Billy slowly strolled down the the road, looking for disturbances in the fire. At least the thing is now isolated, Billy thought. The less stimuli, the better its chances for recovery. He imagined the skeleton in a fiery pit growing back its skin and identity and slowly rising from the ashes.